right, investigation 5.2, equilibrium of forces and Hooke's law. This will be the first that I've used in this. If you didn't see my video showcasing the different parts of this, go ahead and go watch that. Um, and that should be pretty helpful for all the different parts and how that goes. I'm gonna focus on the lab for this one. So the instructions say to grab the spring that's got the blue tape listed there. You're gonna hook him on. And then I believe it says five washers on this and hook him as well. Now this spring scale down here, this is adjustable. So you can just loosen this up and then I'm going to bring this up until my zero centimeters. If I can get him to stop bouncing is right at the bottom of those washers. I would try to tell your students to be very consistent with where they're measuring from. So I'm measuring where it's at on the exact bottom of this, but if they're measuring it from the bottom and then sometimes on the top and they're not being consistent, um, they're gonna get the wrong values. So you set it up like that. Um, and then you basically, all the students are gonna be doing is adding washers to it. So currently there's five, the springs extension is at zero. They can calculate the mass of the holder and the washers. So hopefully beforehand, they've done the mass of the plastic piece. They know how much each washer is. And so then they can add, um, find the mass, calculate the force, and get spring extension. So then the students are gonna add, well, we go from five to seven, so let's add a couple more. It's gonna bounce a lot. Have your students slow the bounce down. I would just put your finger and slowly drop, and then eventually it's gonna stop following you. And then it should stop bouncing momentarily. So you see, just by adding two washers, I've dropped down, if I wanna be precisely accurate, I'm not quite at two centimeters. So I'm gonna say 1.9 centimeters to be accurate, okay? So have your students be very accurate with this and they'll get a good spring scale measurement. Students are actually going to create a graph of their data and then use Hooke's law to define the spring constant. Four, four only. Again, only four Always when you hit report. All right, so then they're going to make a prediction using their model. They're going to say, okay, well, you've done that for up to 11 washers. Make a prediction. If you added a total of 15 washers, looking at your scale, projecting out, using the spring scale constant that you calculated, what do you think the change in distance would be? And then they can add um, up to the 15 and actually see how accurate were they, answer some questions. Basically, the second part of the experiment, they switch over and they're doing compression. That's the spring scale. Oh, there was one part where they say, hey, there's a second spring that's got the white tab on it. Do you think the same thing's gonna happen if you do this? So they can qualitatively experiment with this, see if it's a similar spring or slightly different. Part two of the lab uses, and we're here now, we're gonna use the compression side of things. You'll slip that spring onto your, I think it's called a spindle. Oh, I could be wrong there. Uh, here. Da, 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 da. Place the compression spring on the spindle. Oh my gosh, I was right, you guys. I'm awesome. All right, and then you're gonna put that right on top. It says start with three washers for this one. And this one doesn't bounce as much, so I would, again, let it ease into its position. And we're gonna have to make an adjustment Look at the top of my head, enjoy all that beautiful gray hair, mark it at zero, and there we go. Now we're set to do our thing. This exact map of what they did over here, add washers, measure, draw a graph, calculate that law, make predictions, same thing, just compression instead, slightly different questions. Pretty good lab, I love this setup, it looks awesome. I think your kids will get a lot out of this. I think Hook's Law makes more sense when you're hands-on. So definitely try to get this lab in with your kids. All right, thank you.